Why do you brand yourself a tsunami? I'm not gonna call myself Rainbow Man or Butterfly Boy. Do you get me? It's kind of a disclaimer, innit? I don't want you to hear my music, fam. How does the piece compare? Being a musician, your past life where you know you're doing all these other things. The money I'm making of music right now is a bag. I can't lie. Like it is a bag, but it's nowhere near what I'm used to, innit? Your clothing line. I saw this on your Instagram story the other day. Yeah, so yeah. what's all that about? I sold like a couple hundred before. Oh, seriously? Yeah, I sold them literally weeks before I even got the tracksuit. Yeah. And what that was like your first drop? That was my first drop. Ended up getting banned, you know, from the bag the BBC ended up in the newspapers and okay, all of so that. that song was like that song for me is infamous in it friends are like I know exactly what you're on money ain't clean but then what you got to say that's the thing my bro yeah I've had it and I've lost it many times I'm at a stage where I don't want to take no risk like I'm good mm. you know what I mean money's not even the most important thing is that the long term yeah. vision to like slowly make yeah. that stuff fade away I, I just want to see you know everyone that I love like my family everyone provided for in it mm. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the CEO cast and today we are with a very very special guest but before we get there I need you all to press that subscribe button we're trying to get 50k subscribers for the end of the year and let's get it if you enjoy this podcast at any point make sure you like it today I'm with none other than Mr. Frenzo Harami. Hi right, bro. What are you telling me? I'm good man. How are yeah, you? I'm good man so for the people who don't people who are under a rock literally who don't know who Frenzo Harami is who are you? Well a um, number of things. I mean, most people know me to be a rapper, mm. um, producer. So let's go with that. I'm a rapper. Rapper, producer, yeah. Yeah, producer, musician, artist. Um, yeah, man. All of that combined. All right, cool. So you grew up, the first thing I want to know yeah, is you grew up like not too far away from me, yeah? So yeah, yeah. what was your upbringing like? To be honest, it was good, man. So my family life was good. I mean... It had its ups and downs. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like everyone goes through, you know, things at home in it, whatever. But for the most part, I think, yeah, man, I had a good upbringing. So my dad was there. Do you get me for the most part? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mum's always there for me. We had a close family growing up. Mm. So, Listen, like you said, you're a rapper producer, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So where did that all start for you? For me, it started from a young age. I mean, my uncle, he was my dad's youngest brother. He was always into like gadgets and technology yeah. you get so me when you young. click on when you say when young age how, how old are you talking so i was probably like 12 13 okay i young. think when i first started producing because you know my uncle always had he was always had macintoshes apple max yeah so um and you know all the software and stuff he always had the most recent software so um i started messing around on soundtrack and garage band mm. from a young age and then that kind of developed into using more you know advanced software and over the years, I've always made music. So yeah. I might, there's times where I didn't even open an application for two years, but eventually I always came back to it. Yeah. And, you know, messed around with it in my spare time. Do you get me? Yeah. yeah. But it, was exa- it was exactly that. It was a hobby though, wasn't it? So it wasn't something that I was, you know, thought I was destined to do or that I even wanted to do, perf- like, you know, for, for work, in, in terms of work. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, for me, I always enjoyed making music. Off the back of that, straight into it, yeah. Well, you just said that like, you didn't feel like you were destined for it. Yeah, yeah. The position you're in right now, do you feel like it was actually destined for you to be a musician? When I look back at like the route I've gone in life and, you know, where life's taken me, you know, I would say, you know, quite possibly because, you know, I do have a lot of stories to tell, mm. a lot of things to talk about. Um, and I think, you know, rap music primarily, you know, when you're a rapper, I think for me as well, that's the main thing. You know, I've always loved hip hop. That's my favourite genre you know what I mean I like yeah. all types of music you know what I mean but I'd say hip-hop's always been my favorite because you know when you're rapping you can tell a story you know yeah. what I'm saying like and even with singing tell a story, yeah, yeah like when you're singing yeah you can tell a story as well but when you're rapping it's like you know what I mean you can tell a more you can tell you can paint a vivid picture in it mm. so for me my favorite artists have always been you know storytellers you know what I mean as well as guys who have good wordplay and metaphors and stuff like that yeah. you know I like listening to artists that where you can picture it in your head yeah it's like you're telling a story and you know you know it's real as well like yeah, not yeah. no bullshit nowadays everyone's talking about this that and the other things they've never done or mm. ain't even seen before do you get me but so what talk, what type of artist, artist like who did you listen to when you were growing up I mean because we're talking okay I can't say how many years ago but yeah, we're talking years, man, some yeah. years so ago I'd say like yeah growing up last you know 10-15 years I've listened to loads of different types of music fam so from like rock music to, you know what I mean? Mm. R&B, um, oldies as well, like lowrider oldies. Um, and yeah, just all types of music, bro. And I think the main type of music for me 
would I would say is hip hop and um also dancehall as well, like Bashman. Yeah. So I listen to a lot of like Vibes Cartel. Um, you know, he's for me, he's my favourite artist. Well, yeah, Vibes Cartel, yeah. Yeah, he's I'd say my favourite artist is Vibes Cartel. I mean, especially the old school vibes. Do you get me? Like the nineties mm. dance hall, do you get me? And you know, even going into like the two thousands, I would say all in all, yeah, Vibes is my favourite artist. Like he's up there, isn't it? He's for me, his vibes over Michael Jackson. You yeah. feel me? <laughs> so yeah, man. I but, yeah, that. also um I'd say a lot of I mean before I started rapping, I'll be honest, I'd rinsed out music. So it's like growing up as you grow up, you, you know, you rinse songs out in it. You can't just there's some songs that are timeless mm. that you can listen to over and over again. 100%, but yeah. for the most part, I think everyone goes through phases of listening to of, a certain yeah, type of music. Like certain types of music in it. As you get older, it changes as well. Or you know what I mean? I'm I'm just talking about myself generally. Yeah. That's how I feel it's been for me. And um just before I started rapping, I was listening to a lot of Max B and a lot of Vibes Cartel. Literally, my my CD deck in my car while I was out there trapping was yeah. straight like Vibes Cartel, Max B. You know what I'm saying? Um, but even UK music, I've always listened to UK music, you know, from the grime era, mm. going up to, you know, a lot of the UK rap stuff. I mean, even Draw, like, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a huge fan of Draw because it's just not my type of music. No, yeah. I like it. Even the tempo and the beats, the lyrics, they're all hard fam, I can't lie. Now. There's a lot of artists that I rate on the draw scene as well, but I prefer UK rap myself. Do you get me? I prefer um, original like hip hop in it. So, Well, like the sort of music you listen to as you were growing up? Yeah, so like Tupac, Eminem, you know what I mean? Biggie. Yeah, yeah. All of that. All of that, you know what I mean? 50 Cent even, you know, man, I think I'd say, you know, I had, had fun listening to those. Artists no, th- those were vibey songs. Those were yeah, vibey man. songs, didn't Those you? artists like, really, like, yeah, at an age when I was, like, transitioning from, like, a boy to a man, mm. sort of. That's who I was listening to. It's probably why I'm so fucked up listening to bare <laughs> Eminem and all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so a little packy listening to bare Eminem songs about slitting wrists and certain things. Obviously, it's, it's raw, innit? And obviously, it's, like, it's, it's, but it's, it is what it is, innit? I mean, that, that's it, interesting. So the type of music you listen to, how would you say that's influenced you as you're growing up? It, I'd say... I mean, it has. In, I mean, music does influence us a lot, yeah. like in a lot of ways. Like even down to, for example, like we, like when I started listening to Max B, it was um, that got me very interested in the whole pimping thing. Yeah. Like I mean, America, like pimping is quite like a big thing. Do you get me? It has mm. been. Do you know what I mean? Like so, it's in their culture, isn't it? Do you get me? And not so much over here. Like mm. over here, it's like almost looked down upon because. A lot of the stories you hear about pimps and stuff in the media, it's all negative mm. stuff. It's all like human trafficking and stuff like that. You get me? Yeah. You don't really hear about the whole, like the real pimping. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like the Americans will, will do it. You, you don't know hear that here, Yeah, it's not like that over here. Even though it happens and it's the same, exactly the same thing. It's not, it's not really, you know, looked at like that. It's, in America, it's almost, it's entertainment, isn't it? Mm. Do you know what I mean, fam? Pimps are pre- prevalent in... In you know what I mean, movies society, and songs, yeah, in yeah. the whole in the whole culture, even in hip hop, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And the UK, you know, our rap is more to do with like drugs and guns and stuff like that. You don't really hear that's many violence, people isn't it? To, yeah, yeah. When people refer to themselves as a pimp, more time they're referring to themselves as being like a player or a gallus. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, as yeah, opposed yeah. to a pimp who's to like actual pimp. making money. From pussy, do you know what I'm saying, fam? That's very different. Like me, I'm a, I'm a real pimp. Up, do you get me? So we'll get to your yeah, life man. outside the music in a bit. Yeah, man. But just to rewind a little bit, yeah. So you said you started producing. Yeah, when, yeah. when did you actually start? When's the first time you actually laid your first bar? Can you actually remember that? So yeah, the f- I just think the first time I ever ever um, wrote a lyric was. To be it was a freestyle because it was in a play. I think I was about again like probably about 13 14 mm. in the playground and like you know people are freestyling a couple of the older garlic in the in the school are freestyling so yeah man's trying to you know get involved in that and at the time i remember i used to listen to a lot of that was a time when i was listening to a lot of eminem and all that that's when eminem was popping off yeah, them yeah. times in it so man's listening to a lot of that kind of music so i was getting into hip-hop from then that was the whole scene then as well wasn't it freestyling and yeah all of that doing what this school that. did you go to um, I went to a quite a f- I went to a couple of schools. Primary school, I went to Mission Grove in yeah. Walthamstow, yeah. Um, secondary school, I went to a few. I went to you know one in Walthamstow and Chingford as well. So I went to a couple of different secondary schools. Um, but yeah, in terms of yeah, so the first time I ever just got into it was I would say it was in a playground, mm. and then you know as 
technology started getting more accessible to me. I started, you know, making beats and recording myself. I think the first couple of songs I did, I was dissing people in my class. You know, them <laughs> yeah, as you do. So like as the freestyling in the playground went to like, you know, making songs yeah, yeah, and yeah. funny rhymes. Do you get me? Um, but yeah, like it was, like I said, it was just for fun, innit? It was, it was, it was a it's hobby. Banner, isn't it? Like, I never thought, oh yeah, I want to be a rapper and yeah. I want to do this. Do you get me? Like it's never been one of them things that I've strived to be in it. You know what I'm saying? At the point of when you start working, yeah? So you've come out of school now. Mm. Or were you working throughout school? Um, so yeah. I'm it, talking about any type of work. I'm talking about trapping. I'm talking so about pimping. I'm talking about whatever. Um, Retail if you I started call trapping it. from early, bro. I'm not going to lie. So like when other youths were selling, selling sweets, like I was linking up with, with man them outside school and, and yeah. getting in, 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 in a trap mode to get me from early. So um, my secondary school, I'd say from like year 10, 11, I was I was hardly in school. Do you get me? I was mm. I was always missing school and on the weekends flying to country with with a man them and just making it happen. But yeah, I'd say yeah, work wise, um, and I've always had legit work as well, even from young, because my dad he used to be um, a mortgage broker. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, he still does you know finance and other bits, but he used to be a mortgage broker. He used to you know used to work with the inland revenue as well mm. before. So. Um, his background was always like finance and stuff, yeah. So, um, I was I used to work with him as well. So from like from um, work experience, for example, from then I've, I've been involved in legitimate enterprise as well. Yeah. So I was working with my dad. You know, left school in between, shot in, and you know what I'm saying all that kind of stuff. I've I always had jobs as well as um, you know, working in property. No finance. Yeah, so it's not exactly like you don't come from you don't come from a business background. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. So yeah, I do come from a, a business background. Um, you know, it, so it's like I've always been involved in both sides in it. So yeah. I've been involved with the bad stuff on the roads, and I've been in the office as well. So I kind of got experience on both ways, on both ends. Yeah. So I mean, a lot of rules apply both mm. ways in it. So there's there's things that you learn on the street that you can apply into an office environment and, yeah. and vice versa. Do you know what I mean? It's no, all, at the end saying. of the day, it's all business. And, you know, we only do these things to make money anyway. Whatever we're doing, mm. the primary goal is to make money. You know what I'm saying? Put the money in, your, put the paper in your pocket, in it. So yeah. You've got both sides that you, you make money mm. up until you get caught. You know, I'm exactly, going with this. Yeah. So exactly. tell me about that. So, yeah, I mean... First time you went, Joe. I experienced prison from young. So, like, 17 was the first time I, I went prison. I got arrested. I went to prison for a week. Yeah. My dad had to come bail me out. Um, I was on road for like a year, best part of a year on tag. And then I went back um, when I was 18, I got sentenced mm. and they sent me to prison. So, you know, I done a you know, year or two in there. Um, in essence, it was a lot less. Like I got a couple of years, but you know, if it's your first time, yeah, you'll get out early. Do you get me? Yeah, if yeah. it's less than four years, you'll get tag. And all these things, well, regardless or depending on good behavior. Yeah, more time is yeah. So if it's your first time in prison, obviously, you know what I mean. You're mm. you're, you're fresh in it, so you're freshy basically in it. So yeah, yeah. like you probably get tag HTC. I don't know if the uh, HDC. I think it, I don't know if it's still called HDC. Home detention curfew. Oh, okay. So more time if you got between three months and four years, you can come out like you know three four months early anyway. Yeah. Plus you only do half the time. Do you get me? So the first time it was you know, like I'd say it it wasn't a good experience because I mean then again nothing's bad in it nothing all experience is bad if you learn something and obviously I, I did learn a lot but naturally it was you know it was unexpected I was but never expecting. Didn't you go again after that? Yeah, I went many times after. For me, it's not been you know going to prison. It's just being away from loved ones, being away from family. It's never been, it's never easy in it. Do you when get is me? the last time you were in prison? Um, probably about I think it's been two years now. Two and a half years. That was for driving as well. And or have you sorted it out then? Like, have you so yeah, since the then, I've, yeah, I've got my <laughs> license now. Like I'm driving, like alhamdulillah, I'm driving legit now. Mm. I've always been driving legit. Thing is, yeah, it's never been, the first time it was for dangerous driving, yeah. which was stupidness, yeah. After that, it was always, you know, like, it's not like I stole a car. I wasn't doing anything like that. It was just, just driving disqualified, innit? It's just, yeah, yeah. It's just dumb, innit, my bro? It, yeah. yeah, it's just stupid, bro. I'll be honest with you, it was dumb, innit? Mm. I mean, that was... All those times were a complete waste because didn't learn nothing. I kept making the same mistake over and over again. I had to go to jail four or five times yeah. for driving before I learned like don't drive no, a car. Now yeah, yeah. every if like I won't dare drive a car without mm. insurance. Thing is, it's just 
common sense as well, isn't it? Well, like, why are you going to do that and risk losing your freedom to, to drive? Basically, you know yeah. what I'm saying? If, if I hit a lick or something or, you know what I mean, done yeah. a move and I had some money put down, mm. then it's different. You get me? You, you ride the bird with a smile on your face, isn't it? But <laughs> when you're getting in jail for, some, for driving dumb, or some it? stupidness, you know what I mean? It's, it's a waste man thing, isn't it? You know what I'm saying, fam? If you're in jail for something dumb like that or like a gal or something, do you know what I mean? It's just, it's stupid, man. Would you say the last time you were in prison is the final time? Hopefully, yeah, inshallah. Inshallah. Inshallah, because, I mean, again, like, I've said that each time, innit? But I wasn't as mature as I am now. Mm. Like, my mentality has changed over the years, innit? I'll be real, I, ne- I never really gave a fuck. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, I never really cared about the consequences, innit? Man could handle it. I was a bit ignorant, if like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have to go down that route, but I chose to go down that route, innit? Mm. And, um, yeah, man, there's, there's always consequences, innit? When I want to I wanna throw it back to the music now, yeah. So, yeah. in your opinion and in your perspective, when is when would you say you blew? When was when did friends all blow? Um, to be honest, um, even like blowing now in our days, it's like I don't really like that word because anything blows nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, you get people doing the most dumb shit and blowing up every day. Do you well, what saying? would you say then? So for me, like, cool, like you could say I blew, I blew in it in a way because obviously I got recognized in it. I was yeah. recognized. My music got recognized quite quickly, very early on. To be honest, I never planned to do music. It was just something that just happened. You know what I mean? Someone mm. took a video of me, posted it online. That got shared about. Yeah. Then, you know what I mean? I started getting people messaging me. And, and it kind of went from that. It it? from that. Yeah, one thing <clears throat> led to the other. You know, people started messaging me for, you know, to do another freestyle or release a song. Yeah. So I released a song. And then the feedback was great straight away. You know what I mean? I'm not a man who would have released 20 songs hoping that he would get a banger. You know oh, what I mean? One of them. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm, like, I was not interested, like, I was not interested in doing music. Mm. Do you know what I mean? <coughs> even like, even though I have had the talent for it, that like, my brothers and even my friends for years have been telling me, bro, like, you got to do this thing seriously. Yeah, like, yeah. you can actually make money, like, you'll blow, like, you do that. But I've never been interested in that. That's not what I wanted. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want to be bait. If you weren't a musician, what would you have been? I'd probably be... Bitches full time, bro. Twenty four <laughs> hours a day, I'll be real. I'll probably have about fucking, you know what I mean, twenty thirty. But gaffs. with you in a family where your dad's a mortgage broker in, in yeah. financial sectors, would you not even be even that, like that? I mean, my dad still does. My dad's overseas right now, mm. so he's he's works overseas at the moment. Um, but yeah, I mean that is an option. You know, I could work, with, do some things with him or with other people, mm. and I do. You know what I mean? I still, I've I always have done that. That's always been a thing. I've always been dealing with property or. You know what I mean? Other yeah. anything. I'm not opportunist, in it, bro. So it's like whatever makes money, like I'll, I'm 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 involved in it. As yeah, long yeah. as the, the reward outweighs the risk, like as time's gone on now, it's like you know I take less risk now than I would 10, 15 you years ago. You analyze a lot more. Yeah, like I've, the thing is now, I just, like it's like I ain't got no more time to waste in it. I've yeah. wasted enough time in jail. I've tried to do things and made the wrong decisions in life, and you know I've learned from it. Now I'm at a stage where I don't want to take no risk. Like I'm good. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Money's not even the most important thing right now for me, innit? What is the like, most important thing to you? To right be now? honest, like it's family, innit? And and unfortunately, you need to make money and you need to do these things to have time for money your family. Money is a means innit? to live, isn't it? It's a means to live, and it's it's a madness because that that's we forget why we do this in the first place. Yeah, yeah? we forget why are we trying to make money in the first place? It's not so we can you know get high and and fuck bitches and do this and do that. We, we make money so we can provide for our family and be comfortable. Yeah. And and you know what I mean? Get Actually get to live our life rather than work 15 hours a day just to pay rent. You mm. know what I mean? To live in fucking Ilford Lane. You know what I'm saying, my bro? Like, <laughs> it don't make sense, innit? Or Dagenham or whatever. Like, it's just, that's not life, innit, my bro? Like, that's why we all make money. And things, unfortunately, every, no one's, most people aren't going to make it like that. Mm. Most people are going to struggle their whole life and die working or die in debt. That's just the way society's built, isn't it? Not yeah. everyone can make it. You know what I'm saying? So it's you know it's very difficult. And if and unfortunately, even now, all the like I'm not even gonna start name dropping or baiting man up or dry snitching, but most of these big entrepreneurs right now, they've all come up from something illegal. Yeah. I'm not even gonna start baiting baiting the man them up. But <laughs> <laughs> most of these men that own shops and this, that, and the other, fam, this it's all the front, isn't it? We all know, innit? Yeah, that's how you wash your peas, in it, fam? How, do, how else are you opening all these big restaurants and this, that? Come on, bro. Like, <laughs> half these packies come up from VAT, fam. 
Do you know what I'm saying to you? Like, I'm not even going to bait man up, but it's real, isn't it? This is real stuff. So again, it is what it is. If, if but Just like, to let again, everyone know, I'm not cutting nothing out on this podcast. It's yeah. real shit, my bro. Yeah. Like, it's real shit. Like, so how else a man buying big whips and all these things, fam? Yeah. You know what I mean? Half a mil motors and that. Come on, bro. Like, they, 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 like the dad wasn't working in a fruit and veg store. All right, bro. but let me give you, let me give you um, a scenario, yeah? Let's just say when, you know, music takes over your life and you've got a fat bag coming through, like yeah. bags and bags and bags. And then you buy a fat whip and then someone turns around and says to you, you know what, friends are like, bro, I, I know exactly what you're on. Yeah. yeah, it's not money and clean. But then this what you got to say is that thing, my bro, yeah? I've had it and I've lost it many times. I've crashed hella whips. Yeah. Spent loads of money, lost money. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's like that hurrah money for me, I haven't really benefited from it. Mm. Do you get me? The thing is, I'm surrounded by so much good. Like, even my family, like my grandparents, my mum, you know, everyone makes the wafer, man. Do you know what I mean? I come from a good family, in it, A God-fearing family, in it, For the most part. And it's yeah. like, me doing what I'm doing, I've never seen any real reward from it fam you know what i'm saying even mm. all the all the illegal stuff that man's done personally i've not really gained a lot from it do you get me lola like, yeah, if, yeah. if you actually weigh up the time in prison all the, the time lost and it's not i'll be real like maybe it wasn't for me in it yeah One some people do well yeah. with it you know eventually cool if you're involved in that stuff for a certain amount of time it's a law of averages in it bro if you're doing something bad for 10 15 years you're more likely to get caught than if you done one move hit a lick and then just you know went legit you know what i'm saying yeah. the longer you're in this game the more chance you have of getting caught up the more times you're going to go jail the more times you're going to get shot at. it's just more you're more likely to to, to get it caught mm. up in it so for me i feel like if i look back all those years shot in and all these things taking all that risk it was not worth it you know what i'm saying that that. man for the time man made loads of money man was making three bags a day in crunch yeah you know what i'm trying to say to you but man, at that time even though I was working in property and certain things, like, man was young, innit? Man's spending money, man's doing this, man's doing that. You're not money sensible at that age. Yeah, like, you're not, like, cool. Like, man could have bought, like, more houses and done this and done that. But at the time, it's like, man's wasting it, innit? Man's wasting it, fam. So, it's like, me personally, I haven't really gained too much from it. I've realised, even though the money I'm making off music right now, which Mm. is decent, yeah? It's enough for anyone to live off, yeah? But it's nowhere near what I'm used to, innit? So, I've realised that I mean, at the moment, it's not enough. Like, inshallah, soon, mm, my legit inshallah. money will be enough for me to live mm. the same life I was living before. Do you get me? Let, let's get and into that. I want to so, compare what it's like here yeah, because, you, like you said, you're on two sides of the spectrum. Yeah. You've got legal side and you've got legal side, yeah? Mm. How does the piece compare? Being a musician and then your past life where, you know, you're doing all these other things. So, for me, like, I haven't had any record deals or anything like that. Everything that I've done up until now has been completely independent. You yeah, are you still independent now? Yeah, yeah, still independent. Even down to like, you know, everything. I funded it myself. I've had a couple of f- like close like brethren, like mm. brothers that have helped, helped me along out, yeah. the way. But for the most part, I've done it myself. I've put, I'll be honest, I've made profit of music. So mm. the money that I've put into it, I've got more back. Do you get me? For people who don't, what, like, what would you put your money into as a musician? Like a, no, quite a lot of things, man. Even down to making a song. You've got to have a studio, for example. Yeah. You've so got I've got my own then. studio, so okay, I've got, got to pay rent from our studio. Got to have the equipment. Mm. Do you get me? you got to have time. Time yeah. is money. Do you get me, bro? 100%, yeah. So time that you could be doing something else. And you've got the music videos as well. There, psh, music videos. Even yeah. the song, bro, you have to, you know, you have to get it mastered. Mm. To make a professional record, you know, Cool. The, the, my first, you know, project, couple of projects, you know, cool. Like you can get away with cutting certain corners, but as your sound gets better, it starts costing more. You got to pay someone to master it. Mm. Then, then it comes to the video. You got to pay the camera guy. You got to pay yeah, for a location. If you, if you feel like you're evolving as a musician, your your music video production videos go cost is gonna go up. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. for anyone at the start, can hire a car, park on that same that same front outside Canary <laughs> Wharf, yeah, exactly where everyone goes, yeah. <laughs> everyone knows that spot, yeah. Every Tom, Dick and Haroon parks their car there, gets a camera guy, a couple lights, dancing around with some some Ganjali in the back, yeah. Everyone does it, innit, my bro? Like, it's, it's anyone can, you can get away with that. Mm. If your music's good, it doesn't really matter at yeah. the start. But as things progress, you can't just keep showing people the same shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You have to put more time and effort into it. Put more Be money more creative, into it. it. Yeah. yeah. Fortunately for me, my money's been, you know, I've been getting good streams. So I'd say compared to most musicians, mm. I've been making good money from the outset, even from like promos and stuff like that. Yeah. It's decent money. Like it is a bag. I can't lie. Like it is a bag, but it's again, compared to what I was making before. So like, you know, my first few months of doing music, 
I was probably getting, you know, a couple grand in my account a month, mm. maybe two, three grand from the streams. It takes three months for your royalties to, to process. Yeah. So yeah. Ditto, Distro Kid or whatever um, distributor you use, Tune Core, whatever, it normally takes them, you know, three months from when the song's streamed and then you'll get like the whole month's money you'll get in three that, months yeah, time. Yeah. So there's a little wait there, isn't it? works with YouTube yeah, as well. Fam. So there's yeah. a little wait, then, you know, YouTube even, YouTube, I've been getting YouTube money from early as well because my channel was monetized from early because I've yeah, got quite yeah. a lot of views on my first couple uploads mm. and I've always uploaded on my own channel at the start. A couple of times I've used Graham Daily or done things with Mixtape Madness and Link yeah. Up TV, but for the most part, I've done my own channel. I've been making money from it, but even that money, bro, like the first few months of doing music, so you've got to wait three months to get paid and when you get paid, you're getting a couple grand. It's not great money at the yeah, start. Yeah, not at first. Not at yeah, first. Not at not first. Like, compare that to the roads. Like, I was getting two, three racks a day in Cunch. Yeah. Half of that was, or well, most of that was profit. Do you get me? And compare that to, you know, but, but shutting Pom Pom. This girl was charging yeah. two, three hundred pound an hour. I had gal working, you know what I mean? Making two, three grand a day. I'm getting half of that. Yeah. Sometimes I was getting all of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like more time, the, the things were on, man. They're giving man all the money. With, Do you with, get me? With things that are online, it's, like, it's basically building passive income as well. So yeah. the same way your yeah. song from, let's just say three or four months ago, we're yeah. still making money now. It's just like my YouTube videos. More, you know what? I can't lie yet. It's mad. Even though it's not as much money, I'd say it's much more satisfying, fam. Like, you know, when you see the money in your account yeah, and you see it online and ready to cash out and you see it, you know, it's legit money. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know what I mean? It's it's a better feeling. Even mm. though it's not as much money, man's used to getting cash. Mm. Yeah. And the cash just gets burnt away anyway because yeah, man's yeah. spending it just as fast <laughs> as man make it. Well, even and now. Even, I mean, as now, I'm, I'm much more sensible now. Like, yeah. I've started saving and investing my money now more wisely. I've never, thing is, I've never really been interested in, you know, the latest designer stuff or, you know, this, that, any other. You know what I'm saying? See, everyone likes nice things, innit? Mm. Watches and this, that, any other. Everyone likes a pussy magnet around their neck. Do you feel like as a musician, you've got to have that stuff? Yeah, be real, I've never needed it, man. Because what it is, most people do this stuff for pussy. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah, it's either money or pussy. This is what motivates most people. Most guys are motivated by these two things. If they told me they're not, they're fucking lying, fam. Yeah, you want money or pussy? And more time, people want money so they can go and get pussy because they ain't got no confidence. Yeah, they can't, they have to pay for it, innit? Whether they're taking a the girl out or they're doing this and doing that, most people are chumps, innit? 99.9% .9 of people, that's what they are. They start moving different around gal. They'll snake their mum for their wife, for their girl, or yeah, they man them for their that. girl yeah, yeah, all yeah. the time, fam. Me, mm. man's always been a bit different. Mm. You get me? So my mindset's always been a little bit different. I've always had that pimp mentality. Again, it's from listening to music. Do you get me? Listening to certain artists yeah. and just being interested in, in culture, it's kind of like you summon it into your life. Yeah. Do you get me? So You know, you've been on a few podcasts now, yeah? Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of people have learned, especially when you post stuff on like, you know, when people DM you saying, you know, I've, you've learned to pray five times a day, all yeah. that stuff, yeah? Give me a CEO class exclusive now, yeah? So I want to talk about what's been your biggest song so far to date? My bit were um, earnings wise, or would you say that uh, just in let's general? Just, let's just say in general, and then we'll relate it to earnings wise. So yeah, I mean, after. obviously it goes hand in hand, innit? it? Yeah. So for me, I'd say you know my biggest song is Dujay Mafia. Um, that's in total that's accumulated you know the most views, the most hype. Yeah. That's that song's gone further than any of my other songs. Like yeah. Man's got you know man like Sidhu Muswala banging it out on a tractor in India all the time. Do you get yeah. me on this? How, Snapchat? Many, how many views is that on now? So that's on like. Two and a half mil, over two and a half now. And what about streams? Um, streaming is about the same store. It's, it's so, over a mil streams. Um, I mean, there's a couple of songs I've done. We, even Saudi Arts got quite high streams. There's a couple others as well. Um, the one that I've done with Caps recently, that was a major collab bro. Do you get me? Yeah, two yeah. sick little packies, yeah, from south up to north, yeah, jumping on this thing together. That, yeah. that created an, another, a next kind Different of energy, seismic wave, yeah, yeah, bro, yeah. that that was a lot bigger than even, you know, both of us on our own, we're, we're big in our own rights and we yeah. do our thing, but together, that was, it was quite big, bro. And that done, I'd say in a short space of time, that's done like half the, half of what job, you know, half of what, um, Dujay Mafia did. Has done in a much yeah, longer time. Yeah, in, in that whole time, yeah. in the space of like a month, do you get me? Yeah. And even like my first song, I'd say, Job Young Boys, um, which was the first, um, one of the first songs I released, which I'd say was the most, I'd say, to be honest, that song there is probably my biggest song because that was what initially 
got my name out there. Mm. You know what I mean? Ended up getting banned, you know, from the, by the BBC. Ended up in the newspapers. Okay, and all of so that. that song was like, that song for me is infamous in it because it was one of my first ones. Yeah. It like put my name on the map in it. Do you get me? Let me so, ask you, yeah. So that's all of that. You don't have to give me an exact figure, but if we're talking between, let's just say three, four, five, six figures, mm. what's the biggest paycheck you've had from a song? The thing is, it, it don't work like that for me because because I'm independent, I have to wait for the royalties to come in, innit? Yeah, yeah, That's how I make yeah. my money. So I haven't got a label giving me money um, and saying, yo, look, here's peas and we're, we're going to do this and do that with this song. For me, I've, I've had to wait for the money monthly. So I'll be honest, it's not... Because it's all organic as well, mm. I've not literally put no... I've put minimal money into marketing and stuff because... I do want my growth to be organic. Do you yeah, get me? I think Even that's though, the best way as well. Yeah, because mm. then you know it's real, isn't it? You got real stats. supporters. Yeah, you got real supporters. If you don't listen to my music, like, fuck off, innit? I don't care. Like, <laughs> I don't I care that, if I I'm that. like, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. still, I'm still gonna make money regardless, innit? Mm. I'm still gonna eat. So for me, I don't rely on it, innit? This is not something that I'm relying on yeah. to work. Like, if it don't work, like, fuck it, innit? Do you know what I mean? This is just something that I, I'm enjoying doing. And I'm getting paid for my time that I'm doing it. Now, I think like at the moment, because I've been doing it a couple of years now, I'd say the time that I put, put into it, it's worth it for the money I get back. So if it, all it can do now is go up in it. Mm. So for me, it's like, I do have time for music at the moment. What about, you know, there was a music video you've done. I think it was the one in Five Star Capture. Yeah, yeah. How much did that cost? Because I actually look like a good video as well. Mm. Considering you're independent, that must have cost you a pretty penny. Thing is, you'd be surprised because... Thing is, yeah, everyone's got links in it. Mm. Especially, you know, if you're from the roads and, you know, once you start doing music, you just meet more people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times you can get favours in it. Not even as favours, you've got people that, that want to give you, you things in it. That want to fuck with you in it. Obviously, it's not always like that. Yeah. And man don't rely on that. Do you get me? If I yeah, have to yeah. pull out money for it, for location or whatever, then man can do it. But I'd say, to be honest, not that much. It would be a lot less than what you'd think because, you know what I mean? Most of the stuff that, that you see in the videos, we've, we've got anyway, it's on deck. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Even down to locations, like all, most of my first videos, I'd filmed them in my own apartments. Or, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Places where you places can where I've got access, access to. But yeah, I, I filmed my first few videos in my in a place where I had. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Man's told to to get in the back of the video, and <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Just make it happen. Like man, then pulled up in a couple of their whips. I pulled up my whip outside. Do you know what I'm saying? It was it was it was real, innit? it? It wasn't mm. fake. Like man, didn't go and rent a Lambo or go and get a Rolls Royce from my man. Do you get me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously naturally as things progress, you do want to show different things in your videos, innit? I don't mm. want to be making the same videos. That's boring. Yeah, I hear You that. know what I'm saying? I want to start making videos more. got a different flavor, a different style to it as Yeah, well. I, I try in it. I try my best. More time, I'll be honest, up until now, even the videos, I've never really sat and made a proper plan for a video. Usually I'll wake up in the morning and say, right, I'm shooting a video today. Like the man them will know, yeah. See me, I'm a very spontaneous guy. That's why the first two years of my music career, I'm just releasing random stuff. Yeah. And at random times, like more time, not even any promo, man, just bang, videos coming out today. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's times where we've shot a video, that Tudje Mafkia, for example, bro, yeah. We started shooting that video on a Friday. It took us a day to shoot. Or well, I think it was a Friday anyway, but long, it don't matter. It took us a day to shoot. We've gone back to mine afterwards, yeah. Akash and, and Will, yeah, had th that was the team. Me, Akash and Will were working on this on, on, on that one and a couple of the others. So, so after we shot the video, we came back to mine, grabbed some munch, got some weed, yeah, came back to, to mine and just stayed up all night editing the video, slapped out a trailer in the morning. Oh, so you look edited everything. Literally, you we shot the video, edited it, and we released it within 24 hours. That what, what about now? One. Like your most recent and music even video. Even my most recent one, same thing. That's 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 what we, up until now, I'd say like more like ninety nine percent of my videos have just been waking up in the morning, just going with it, in it, just yeah. making a couple calls and just making it happen. But now I'm at a stage where now I wanna do wanna take more time with it. You know what I'm saying? So I've 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 done it a certain way up until now, but I mean now I'm at a stage where I do want to start showing more things in my visuals because you know the lyrics are very deep in terms mm. of the detail. Yeah, and they're also very so, raw as well. Very I raw, get to that very deep. I want to get so now with the visuals. Like I want to start getting the visuals now to match up with the lyrics a lot more. So now it, you know I'm going to spend more time on the visuals so people can actually see the story visually rather than just hearing it. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I mean, I've got more time now in it for music because as I've progressed in my music career, a lot of the other stuff I was doing, it's I've got less up. and less time yeah, for yeah, it, yeah. my bro, innit? That's all it is. If you ain't got time for it, then naturally you're not going to 
be doing as much as you were before. You yeah. know what I mean? Like two, three years ago, I was literally, I was living in brothels, bro. Do you get me? I, had, I was around women. I had like a hundred girls that I was working with. 10, 15 locations in mm. London, man's moving around everywhere. That was my life. Is that you know the long-term vision to like slowly make yeah, that stuff fade that's, away? That's, that's, that's the thing, my bro. That's, that's exactly what I'm trying to do because like I said, it's all down to, we do this to make money. Yeah, yeah. now, cool. When I first started doing, you know, when we first started doing something, we do enjoy it. It's something new. It's exciting. Mm. After a while, it kind of becomes tedious. It's boring. You get me? You've yeah, rinsed yeah. it out. Like, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, how many bitches are you going to bang before you get tired of it? You know what I'm saying? For me, I'll be honest, it's never even been that. I've never, I've never done this for anything like that. Not recognition, not girls. That's not been motivation. I've wanted to buy big yards and, you know, own land and pattern up my family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's yeah. always been the vision. But along the way, we forget that we're doing this so we can, we can provide in it and we start getting lost in the source in it fam. So I'd say at the moment, it's like, I want, I'm trying to come away from that lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? You know, that party lifestyle, that yeah, haram lifestyle. That, yeah, all of that. You know what I mean? Drugs and alcohol and all this stuff. It's not good for us, isn't it, my mm. bro? So being around it, for me, that's why I've had problems with drugs. You know what I mean? I've sniffed cocaine and done stuff like that mm. because I'm around it. It's very easy to get to get led down yeah, the wrong yeah, path, innit? But alhamdulillah, now I'm, it's very minimal, innit? Alhamdulillah. So let me, let me go back to your lyrics here and... Um, Obviously, there's there's a lot of opinions about your lyrics here. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now. I'm going to give you my opinion, my take on it. Mm. I think you're quite a smart guy in that sense, yeah? Because yeah. your lyrics are very raw and the way you deliver it, is, especially, is very raw. Yeah. Yeah, so some people might call you, I'll be honest, they might say you're tapped. And some people might say, like... I'm tapped. <laughs> some people might say it's banter. Yeah. I'm the guy who says it's banter. But either way, whatever they're saying, good or bad, it, Frenzel's name yeah. is in their mouth. A lot of, yeah, it is banter at the same time, you know. I, sometimes I do want to make people laugh. Do you get me? Some mm. of my lyrics are like that. But at yeah, the same the time, last lyrics it's, went, it's all real shit. Yeah. Like nothing that I've ever said on a song has not happened. Yeah. You get me? Like Even though we like was, to say it's for entertainment purposes or whatever. Like, Just let's put a half a Z up your asshole. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't know if it was exactly half a Z. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, there are there, there, there are bats, but people thought I was talking about a half a Z of weed, fam. Like mm. if you, someone thought I was talking about half a Z of weed, then you're fucking retarded, blood. Do you get me? Even then, if you compress it, it's not that much. The man them in jail are getting packs in every week, fam. You get me? Courtesy of uh, yours truly. So it's not even a half ounce when you compress it is not that big, but. When I was talking about a half Z in my arsehole, I was talking about cocaine. Mm. You get me? Which is not very big, my bro. Like, I, I, like man do shits bigger than that. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying, fam? <laughs> He's not talking like, man's got a half Z of fucking bud in my tweet. Like, who's going to do that, bro? That's dead. <laughs> like, if fed, feds catch you with half a Z of bud, they probably won't even nick you for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Who's going to put that in their ass? These man are just dumb. People just chat shit, fam. But you know how to get people talking, though. That's my point. This year. And a lot of my lyrics, so I'm not going to lie, they have multiple meanings. So man's got double, triple fucking quadruple entendres you get me yeah, so yeah. one thing that i'm saying could mean multiple meanings and mm. sometimes cool people take the the worst meaning but that's fine i, I don't mind in it. it is what it is take it how you want it i say it how it is how i saw it in it mm. so like i'm not gonna hold back in it you know what i'm saying so do you think that helps with the way that you're popping it does but again it's like i've never watched that in it i'm not really watching that with me i like to keep my music very black and white so a lot of artists will be talking about things, but they'll be hiding it. Like indirectly. Yeah, indirectly. You've got all these, most of these pop songs, fam, they're dirty. You've got little kids dancing to like, turkey songs, fam. Do you get mm. me? That's just brainwashing them in different ways. But yeah, because yeah. the words are masked, yeah. because they're talking about lollipop instead of lun. Do you get me? You don't notice the difference, fam. You think it's some nice song. It's just words, fam. They, they manipulate Basically, the words. 50 Cent Candy Shop. Candy Shop, for example, innit? So yeah. like in 50, 50 as well, he's got... He's got songs that are straight up, like, you know, like PIMP, innit? Yeah, He's yeah, got yeah. songs like that. So, so, but even that song, for example, a commercially successful song is literally, it's, it's mostly sexual, innit? Most of the songs, I'd say, they are sexually, like, oriented. They're related to sex, innit, in some yeah. way. Most of the songs that are popping, they're either about love or sex or, you know what? Like, what else are they going to be about? It's just, it's just the way it's articulated, the way I articulate it, because I just say it how it is. And also, I think, because I use Punjabi words, because mm. I speak, um, people aren't used to hearing that in it, on a song, innit? Yeah, no, no, and no. I think, especially when you're at home, man can listen to certain, like, man have probably grown up listening to the most dirty music, but because their mum don't speak English, or like, she's fresh off the boat, she don't understand it, they can play it as much as they want, innit? Yeah. But when it comes to my lyrics now, you can't exactly play it around oh, your you family. Even if your mum's the... 
that like, even if your family is all fresh in Pakistan, you play my song and you hear Puddi and all this shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's gonna obviously it's gonna sound worse, isn't it? When, mm. But when other people are talking about pussy and licking this and licking that, you got Asian girls driving around in their car singing along to it all day long, fam. Do you get me? But the same girls will start hating on man because man's man's using the man's talking in Apni Zaban. Do you get me? And yeah. it's like I think that makes it more real to people as well, isn't it? Because it's like it hits home a lot more, isn't it? Staying like it's, I think it's keeping your culture and your music. And it's because I'm a Paki as well, bro. Like be real, yeah. Because I'm Pakistani, because I'm Asian, obviously Pakistani, especially because being Pakistani and being Muslim, I'd say man's targeted from you know what I'm saying mm. from all types of angles, isn't it? Now people will understand what I'm talking about. Um, same way, you know, if you're black, you know what I mean, and you know even white people nowadays don't get twisted. Everyone now nowadays experiences racism, in it. Yeah. Like. You don't have to be white to be a racist. And, and I think nowadays it's like, I'd say Pakistanis especially, we've had a, a lot of stick from the media mm. about everything. Yeah, about terrorism, about this, all types of bullshit. Yeah? yeah, when most of us ain't involved in that. Do you get me? Mm. And even when it comes to the, you know, the Rotherham groomers and all stuff like that, like they can't stop talking about it. But They'll most stick of, Pakistani but in front of it. Most of pedophiles, I guarantee you, check the statistics. Most pedos won't be Pakistani. Do you get me? Yeah. I'll guarantee you. I almost put, I'll put my life on it. Do you know what I'm saying? But they like to manipulate, you know, the truth. Yeah, that's, that's the media for and, the news, and, and attack it? man in it. So this is why I think even when it comes down to my music, yeah, man got banned for talking about pimping and some real stuff like that. But that's in music all the time, bro. Americans yeah. use that in their music all the time. All the time, bro. Like it's all about like you know what I'm saying. Whole artists have built their careers on the back of you know what I'm saying influencing people to do shit. You know what I'm saying, mm, fam? Yeah, I hear like, that. Like, so for me, it's like, I'd say I'm, I'm targeted a lot more because I'm Pakistani. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying, my bro? If I was saying the same things in, you know what I mean, in a different language or if I was a different colour, then it probably wouldn't be as bad. Yeah, I'd be real. I heard it. Do you know what I mean? I definitely wouldn't get banned from radio and things like that to the point now where all these pussy old DJs are shook to play, man, now. They don't want to play, man. You get me like, <laughs> fuck you, man, bro. You let, me, me, no, no. Let, let me ask you something. You're yeah, going back to the point of being Muslim, yeah? Yeah. I know for a fact, because I've seen it on my other podcasts and the comments and all that stuff, you always get someone commenting saying, you know, basically judgmental yeah. towards your actions and all that stuff, yeah? So what do you say to people who are going to comment that? Because 100% going to comment on this thing podcast. The thing is, firstly, you know? like, why are you watching it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Let's be real. Why did you search for it? My name's Harami, innit? If you're God-fearing... Man or woman. Why do you brand yourself as Harami? Thing is, Harami again, it's another thing where it's got multiple meanings in it. Yeah. So, you know, you could think it means bastard or it could mean someone who does Haram stuff mm. or it could be like, just for me, it's just like a Rami in it. Like for me, it means like savage in it. Yeah. Like a complete okay. savage Rami, Dallah, Kanjari, you get me? But it's like, again, it's all, you know, it's all down to, down to that. And obviously it, like, it's not a, it's not a great word in it. Let's mm. be real. It's not a great word, but, the music's not exactly rainbows and butterflies, in it? I'm not going to call myself Rainbow Man or Butterfly Boy. Do you get me? Or and, and start, you know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I'm Frenzo Harami. Do you get me? Obviously, Frenzo, people uh, people used to call me Frenzy growing up. That was my nickname. Yeah. Frenzy the Pharmacist. I started, that was my first <laughs> rap name, it. Frenzy the Farmer, Frenzy the Pharmacist. Then, you know, people used to call me loads of remix names, in it? Like Frenzo, Frenzos, you know, Frenzino, whatever, in it. Yeah, just, yeah, all of that stuff. And Frenzo just kind of stuck. So Frenzo Harami, I don't know how the Harami came about. It just sounded good, in it? But I can't lie. I wanted to have a bit of our culture in there, in it? Yeah. And that's our culture, in it? No, that's, but your music is whole, like, it's all in our culture. Not in our culture, what should I say? Your culture is in the music. It's in the music as well. Yeah. But like in the name, and I think the main reason why I use that name, I'll be real, is kind of a disclaimer, in it? Mm. Because let's so, be real, yeah. See, if if you're you know a good brother and a good sister and you're pious and you pray five times a day and you're not involved in this lifestyle, I don't want you to hear my music, fam. Yeah, like, I don't want you. you to listen to it. I'm not yeah. trying to influence you to do bad. I don't want you to get any sins off the back of me. Don't listen to it. There's mm. millions of things out there. You probably won't hear it unless you're into that stuff anyway. If yeah, you're listening yeah, yeah. to haram music, then you probably might hear it. But if you're on YouTube searching, you know, listening to, to Nats and Nasheeds and, you know, searching for, you know, Islamic stuff, th that's what you're going to have on there, isn't it? If you're yeah. on there searching for computer games, you're going to have computer games and whatever on there, isn't it? Yeah, so, it's just your algorithm, Yeah, isn't it's it? your algorithm. So if I pop up on your algorithm for whatever reason and you see it, firstly, friends or Harami. Like if you're a Muslim 
or if you're any religious person and you know what that word means. Yeah. Now, to be fair, I don't even think you need to be Muslim or anything. Everyone knows what Harami means. Everyone knows what Harami, knows what Harami, Harami means. means. Exactly. So even then, if you see that, then you're going to know, right, like that's this is something bad. Maybe I shouldn't click on it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? If you do like listen to that stuff, then cool. Like you're going to hear it how it is, isn't it? I don't really care how people feel. I don't care if you're sensitive or insensitive or whatever. Mm. Like I don't care. Like I'll just say it. And say it how it is whatever it? yeah say it what it is I never thing is me I don't ever disrespect anyone mm. I don't disrespect I've never disrespected women you know people like to say man disrespect women in my songs how am I disrespecting women why because but firstly I'm talking about a small percentage of women most of my songs I'm talking about hoes that are you know selling sex you know what I mean so let's be real what, how, much, how much positive stuff am I going to say about about that yeah. it's not a positive thing cool you make money and whatever but ultimately, it is a negative thing, isn't it? A lot of people that are involved in that, more time, they're only doing it to make money. You know, they might not even want to be doing that. Do you get me? So it's never a positive thing, isn't it? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Even when it comes to, you know what I'm saying? It's just this whole, the whole scene in general, it's never positive. But again, I think people like to attack man a lot more because man is Asian, isn't it? Because I'm Pakistani and primarily because I'm Muslim. I think a lot of brothers and sisters are judgmental. And even, even people that are doing... I'm not talking about religious people either. Even people that are doing everything that I do, that are sniffing, that are that are, that are involved in the same stuff I'm doing, that are cheating on on their wife and doing a lot of worse stuff, yeah, than I do, lying to people, they'll still point their fingers at me and be like, "You're the bad guy." <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, like you know what I'm saying that's that's exactly how it is, man. People like to people love to do that, innit? They love to chat shit. There's too many haters out here, bro. We're on CEO cost, you know. We talk about business, we talk about investment, all that stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. How would, like, I want to talk about friends or as a brand. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to start this off with your clothing line. I saw this on your Instagram story the other day. Yeah, so yeah. what's all that about? So yeah, I mean, clothing, I've dabbled in clothing a little bit already. Mm. When I first started out, I got some stuff from Pakistan and it was, you no know, it was decent quality. It was the first time I've I'd done anything like that. So, you know, it was quite alien to me at the time. Mm. But I ordered three different designs of clothing. Um, I've sold quite a few. I sold like a couple hundred before. Oh, seriously? Yeah, I sold them literally in a couple of days, like weeks before I even got the tracksuit. Yeah. Bro. And what, that was like your first drop? That was my first drop. And I sold so many that I didn't even have enough tracksuits. And you know what I mean? People yeah. were still buying it. So I had to literally take them offline. I had to refund people some money as well because I knew I wasn't going to be able to fulfill it <laughs> yeah, in time, yeah, innit? Yeah, I didn't yeah. want people to be waiting and emailing me. So... I had to refund some of them, but, you know, they came through and, you know, it was good. You know what I mean? I'd say I was happy with two of the designs and the quality. Mm. One of them could have been a bit better, but, you know, I'm dealing with someone that I don't know in Pakistan who's, you know, and I was kind of going on a, out on a limb as well. You know, I didn't really see any samples of quality yeah. or anything like that. You know what I mean? I kind of just based it on trust. And, you know, kind of visuals, you know, what I was seeing. Was on, it on someone that you knew of or just like... Someone that I, I got contact with randomly. Yeah. I mean, see me, I'm good at... I've always been good at networking. Um, networking and, you know, forming business relationships. So for me, it was, you know, it was quite easy to find someone that, you know, that could deliver what I wanted. Mm. We were talking um, for, for a bit and then, you know, we started, you know, we started doing some designs. And yeah, it worked out quite well because, you know, I sold loads of tracksuits like i said one of the one of the tracksuits could have been a bit better but again it's just a learning curve in it you know it was a limited drop and I, I learned from that so um since then i haven't done any clothing until recently yeah or a couple of weeks ago um okay me, so when's the first time you doubled into it so that was probably about 18 months ago now okay, okay that was the so first time okay. i did it when i first you know first started doing music i thought it was recently no yeah no recently i've started doing it again but probably, yeah, two weeks ago, I set up you know, a new website. Um, me and my designers have been working on it. Even even at the moment, a lot of the track suits and a lot of the, the main items that we're going to be selling mm. aren't on there. Yeah. But you know, we've got a couple of track suits on there. We've got you know loads of t-shirts and, and other stuff. We've even got chains as well. We've got Harami chains, pendants. You get me? <laughs> not, like, not like, you know... 18 karat gold bust down expensive no, but it's, ones. It's but yeah, it's for the man, yeah, for 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 the, for the use them. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's good, man. Like, you know, nice quality chains. We got I've got condoms on there. I've been selling a lot of condoms <laughs> as well. So a lot of people buy it for the novelty factor. Yeah. But they're actually good condoms as well. Do you get me? Good quality. They'll help yeah. you go sardi dart. You get me, fam? <laughs> so, so yeah, man, are they good quality as well? 
And um, yeah, man, it's it's been going well. I've been selling quite a, quite a, a bit of stuff on there. What's um, that like for you, adding another source of income? It's, no, it's very good. And, you know, because it's a legitimate income as well, you know, mm. selling clothing, you know, people can chat shit about a lot of things, innit? Even music's haram, innit? Yeah. Really, like, but when it comes to clothing, it's, you know, it's fully legit. So it's a good feeling making fully legit money. Do you get mm. me, fam? I mean, having said that, you know, it's not like it's the first time I've ever done something legal, but it's, it's, it's something that, I mean, even the way I've got it set up, I don't, I've got, you know, people that take care of the, the, you know, the clothing, the delivery, the, every, everything's taken care of. So the first time I did it, there was a lot of headache, bro. Cause I was doing it on my own. I might've had one or two people helping me, but I had to go through everything myself, yeah, yeah, just yeah. post it out and all this. But I'll be honest with you, it was just long. Like I don't get paid enough to do that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fam? Like for me to do that, it was just long in it. So, off you know, then, isn't yeah, it? so okay. I learned from the first time, right, to make an extra whatever percent, I don't want to have to just do it myself, in it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. when I've done it this time round, I'm working with people that have, you know, got experience in it. We do all the printing in house and everything, you know, all the embroidery. They post it out. You know what I'm saying? They care, take care of all the admin side of it. I've got access to, you know, the numbers and the stock or whatever as well. So mm. I can keep an eye on it, but. I can also, you know, edit things and give them ideas whenever I want and, you know, upload new stuff. So I've got a lot of control, but when it comes to a lot of the, you know, admin side of it, a lot of the logistics. Yeah, you've got a whole team I've for got, that. Yeah, I've got a team that takes care of that. So that's that's been a lot, it's been a lot better that way as yeah. well. Because, you know, I want an income where I don't want to have to work, yeah? Because I, I do things to work, innit? I, I already, you know, I'm already putting in work, you know, in other places, innit? Like mm. in a trap, in a studio, wherever I am, I'm putting in work, so... It's nice having income on the side. You know what I mean? Business is yeah. running. I've got, you know, I've got other businesses as well that I'm involved in, you know, quite a lot, quite a lot actually um, on both sides of the spectrum. But I'd say clothing has been very good for me. Um, merchandise and what stuff. What is like the long-term goal or vision for you? Um, to be honest, my bro, it's like, I can't, I'm, I'm not even looking that far ahead. Do you know what I'm saying? How far do you I'm, look? I'm just... I'll be real like I've always lived for the moment innit yeah. I can't lie fam I've, I've lived my life like that innit I'm a very spontaneous guy um, at the moment I'd say my my vision is you know having you know loads of properties having you know loads of cars and it's just like anyone else innit yeah for me I'd say I, I just want to see you know everyone that I love like my family everyone provided for innit mm. eventually that's always going to be the end goal everyone's got the same end goal innit but at the moment, again, it's like, you know, man's always had money at the same time. Man's always made money. I've yeah. always been comfortable to some extent, innit? Yeah. So even that, it's like, I don't know, man. It's it's a tough one, innit? Oh, it's like saying. things, even even my my friend, I'm a very volatile person, innit? So, you know what I mean? One day I might be feeling like this. The next day I'm be like, right, I want to do this. Like I'm mm. constantly Very spontaneous. Active, so yeah. Like the it's like, that you do. Yeah. And so, the plans. So I smoke a lot of weed and do other stuff to sort of bring my bring me a couple notches like down, down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Man's always moving at one hundred and ten. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? One hundred and ten percent. So, um, I'd say the primary goal at the moment is, you know, to make some music videos, good quality videos. You know, tell different stories. There's a lot of bad things that I've seen happen. There's things that shocked me as well that I wasn't expecting to happen. Mm. Things that I thought I was in control of. Do you get me, fam? Like man's been in, life. man's been, yeah, like loads of things. Work life mainly, because what it is, my personal life's always been quite safe, innit? Yeah. I've only ever got myself into situations or been involved in, you know, things like that for money. Mm. Do you get me, fam? I've, I'm, I've never been involved in criminality to harm people, or like all of my, you know, all of my crimes you could say were victimless crimes, fam. Yeah. You know, apart yeah. from when I knocked a guy off a bike once and drove into an office, like. Then you, and you call it, Wait, why, I, had a, I had a madness once, yeah. <laughs> I had a police chase in it. In um, This is like 2012. I had a police chase in central London. I was doing about 70, 80 miles an hour. And there was a guy at the traffic lights. I didn't see him. So I've gone to miss him. And, you know, I've licked him off the, the motorbike and ended up losing traction control in it. So the BM just flew out of control, went straight into an office. So I've done like, I think it was 200 grand's worth of damage. The guy on the bike. What tried, BM was that? It was like free series and it was an old school one, innit? Oh, okay. But it just yeah. went out of control, innit, my bro? And, and then the guy on the bike, probably tried to make a big claim. The guy said he got shingles mm. from stress. Shingles is like, 
Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Chicken I know. pox yeah. almost, didn't it? The guy tried to say he got shingles from stress. He can't get back on a motorbike now. Nah, he has nightmares. Mm. But the guy milked it, bro. Put the ear, I don't know. He definitely made some money off that, man. So I've been get, I've only got, I got letters from that like a year ago, fam. So you must have just got paid or something. Do you know what you I mean? You know, with all your driving record and all that, your, your, insurance, favor, fam. your insurance must be mad. To be honest, it's not that bad, you know. I mean, I got things recently, I got a lot of points because check this, my bro, yeah. I rented a car. This is another lesson for the for the youths. Them don't rent cars of random people online. See on Facebook, Instagram, you got a lot of these car rental people. Yeah, mm. be careful who you're going to. Yeah? yeah, because a lot of them are dodgy, fam. Yeah, so I've gone to this guy now. He's hollered me for, first and foremost. Yeah, bro, I got cars for you. I'll give you a car on the house. Just patting me up some promo. At the time, I needed a car as well to run around in. So I thought, rather than using my own car, cool. Mm. Let me just use this one to do my little ones and twos, innit? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the car off him for a week. Ended up giving it back. It was a golf, yeah? Ended up giving it back. Thing wasn't even working properly, bruv. Like, fucking charger weren't working properly. It was, it was all just Problem the shambles there. anyway, bruv. I gave the car back to the guy. Bruv, six months later, I've got about 30 letters in my fucking mailbox f- for speeding. Yeah, in like Hastings somewhere, like Hastings Road or something. Next man's giving you somewhere license. I've never been, bro. I don't know who's done what, but yeah. I got bare speeding tickets. It's like the, it's like in three or four days, yeah, someone's got hella speeding tickets, and I be real act. It kind of looked like a man done it on purpose, my bro. Like my brother's just driving up and down the road, yeah, trying to do man over. See, when I catch that guy, it's not when I catch you, fam. It's on site. Like I'll, I'll do a few years jail because my man he made me lose my license for six months. I got like. Because when I went to court, you know, I had the Quran in my hand, so I couldn't lie in it. Mm. And I picked up the Quran, I messed up in it, because now I have to tell the truth in it. So I've kind of said, yo, like, um, you know, I told them the truth. I said, look, this is what happened. Someone's obviously used my thing, blah, blah, blah. Then when they've asked me, you know, about the actual crime, it wasn't speeding, it was not replying to the letters. Yeah, yeah, because okay. I'm not a snitch in it. I'm not just going to write someone's details and, mm. and send it to them. So I didn't do that. So... I admitted to them. I quite didn't reply to some of the letters. Blah blah blah. They gave me thirty. I got thirty three points, fam, in total. But what they do? They it's called totting up, innit? So those thirty three points, they just disqualified me for six months. Yeah. And then gave me three points on my license. So, to be honest, it's not that bad. Like it's not because I've had my license for a long time. Yeah, a long time. Yeah. It's it's not it's not as bad as you'd think. You get me? I haven't been done for drink driving. I think that's more serious. If you get done for drink driving in that, like, that's when, yeah, that's when like insurance companies and that, they'll. Yeah, yeah all of that. Just, it's dead. It's mad. So, where do you move forward from here, man? Where does Friends all go from here? New music coming out soon? Loads of new music. Um, I'd say, I mean, at the moment, I'm just, you know, trying to, I'll be honest, bro, I'm trying to take it easy at the same time because my work rate is always a bit too high. And whatever I do, mm. I, you know, I do go ham in it, yeah? yeah so whatever I'm, no matter what I'm doing in life, I've always gave it my all in it. So music's now, it's getting to a stage for me where like, I'm taking it more serious. Like the first year or two, it was just, is whatever, in it? Yeah. But now- Now you know, that you see it going places. Yeah, I see it, you know, the potential. Yeah. You know, I'm taking it a bit more seriously and, you know, trying to put more time into it mm. because ultimately, bro, I don't want to be doing- you know, put illicit things in it to make money because I have to, you know what I mean? I want to be able to make halal money, legitimate money. Do you get me? Pay a bit of tax, whatever in it is what it is, yeah? Get, you know, get a friendly account and whatever. But yeah, for me, it's all about just legitimizing my whole, you know, operation really, man. Mm. And just making that transition. I've already started, little little way to go. And I think, you know, hopefully I'll make a full transition. I'll be real fam. I don't think I ever will make a full transition. Why is that? But it's in my blood, fam. Like, I just love it, innit? Like, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm married to yeah, the Yeah, but streets. it's always, it's, it's, a, it's a risky game though. It everything, is, isn't my it? bro, but you know what it is? Wouldn't you want to be out of that? I do, but at the same time, my bro, it's like, there's always something that pulls man back into that life, innit? Let's be real, innit? And even though I'm thinking like this now, hmm. I don't know how I'm going to be thinking in, you know, six months time, in a year's time, even tomorrow, bro. I might wake up tomorrow and think, fuck it, you know what I mean? Yeah, let me quit. Like, because yeah. I'll be honest, it does get. It gets a bit tedious as well, innit? Even, you know, when you first start doing music, like everything, cool, like it's new, innit? I haven't, I haven't really done music professionally. Yeah. So it's very interesting. But then after a couple of years, it's like, it becomes the same, innit? It's not a hobby no more. Now you're doing it to make money, innit? So mm. now it's work. So it's, you got to have that balance, innit? So me, I wouldn't be doing music if I didn't enjoy it. So fortunately, I do still enjoy music. I love making music. You know what I mean? I like writing about experiences. 
And because I'm still involved in, you know, other activities, that also motivates me, bro. Like, I'd say I wouldn't be able to just be a rapper because I'm not a rapper, fam. You know what I mean? You asked me before, what people know me as a rapper, mm. but I'm not a rapper, fam. What do you class yourself as? I'm, I'm loads of things before I'm a rapper, fam. You could call me a mortgage broker, call me a drug dealer, call me a pimp, dollar, whatever, fam. Like, I'm all these things. Yeah, P-I-M-P. You're like, packing into managing prostitutes. Do you get me? That's that's, that's <laughs> my main you thing. Definition. If I could give you, like, the most income I've made, yeah, in my life, my adult life, yeah, up until three years ago, I had one of the top three escort agencies in the UK. You know what I'm saying? I was top of Google. Type in escorts, London escorts, Pakistani escorts, Bengali escorts, yeah. whatever. Man was, you know... There. Top three, but I was spending five, six grand a month on SEO. Do you get me? I had one of the top SEO companies mm. doing search engine optimization around the, the clock, bro. So man was, I was getting girls emailing me pictures of their puddy every day for work, fam. Begging for work. Like, to the point where I'm trying to talk girls out of it because it's like, are you sure this is for you? Because this works not for everyone, fam. Do you mm. get me, fam? I'll be real with you. So and a lot of people do it as they think it's a last resort thing. Yeah. I've never fucked with any of them girls. I only like work with people that want to do it. They're approaching me for it. Do you get me? And they're at a certain level, innit? Like there's levels to this as well. Yeah. Even that. down to even like down to being a pimp, yeah. You got different kinds of pimps, fam. You got them gorilla pimps that are slapping girls up for their money. You got them lover boys that that are like, you know in relationships with girls and twisting their head up and breeding mm. them up and then pimping them out. You know what I'm saying? Man don't do none of that, my bro. Like, man's a real dollar, isn't it? So, I have, for me, it's just been real. Like, the girls I worked with, they've wanted to give me money, innit? It's like, bro, what it is, yeah? I'll be real. Like, it's annoying, fam, because you've got bare girls online right now killing this OnlyFans thing, yeah? Making money off perverted, desperate old men that are just going to pull out money for anything, innit? Yeah? yeah. You get me? Like, let's say if you're, you're a young girl... And you're going to link a sugar daddy, yeah? And he's giving you money every day. Bro, people clap in it. They applaud that, innit? You know what I'm saying? Oh, the young girl's getting money off an old guy. It's normal, innit? Mm. Yeah? But what about when a, a girl wants to give me money? Do you know what I'm saying? What am I going to say? Nah? Like, take it back? Come on, fam. Like, man's going to take it, innit? <laughs> yeah? Come on, bro. I've had bit what it is, fam. There's, there's a difference, innit, my bro? Like, obviously, if you're running an escort agency and girls are getting 50% of the money, you're taking 50%. You're paying for drivers, you're paying for accommodation, condoms, whatever. That's a business. You're running an enterprise, isn't it? Do you get me? Whether it's legitimate or not, it's all grey, innit? That's you're still running a business, yeah? Mm. Me, like, cool. With me, it was just straight pimping, fam. Yeah? Like, girls wanted to give me money, fam. They wanted to be around, man. Do you know what I'm saying, my bro? <laughs> like, don't ask me why, don't ask me what spell they were under or what kind of judge they were under, but bro, it's like you know what I'm saying? If a girl's mashing three bags a day and she's giving it all to you, take it. I'm like, I'm not going to say no. I never, never used to want these bitches. <laughs> but yeah, I'd say like, a lot of people won't understand what I'm talking about, innit? Yeah. But this is real. Like, I think this has definitely shit. been a, a, a different podcast to one yeah, of the number four. Yeah, I'm just being 100% real, innit? What no, it no, is, no, I get that. I get you that. said to me before the podcast, just be yourself. Yeah. You know, you, it's your podcast, say what you want. And, you know, I've, I've said things in other podcasts, innit? You know, even, you know, a couple of podcasts, I might have, because of the audience, mm. you know, I've had to hold back on certain Detail. things. We've touched certain subjects in it. Yeah. It's like, hey, I'll be honest with you. This is, I wasn't too sure what subjects to touch on because like I've spoke about a lot of things in it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. say my main sort of focus over the last six, seven years or five years, like before rapping, I haven't even spoke about on a podcast. Do you get me? Because mm. it's a taboo subject, innit? People like, you know what I'm saying, fam? They start getting judgmental or they don't want to... Do you think? It, but do you feel like you wanted to talk about it because it's almost like that was your life? Of what, I want to talk about it. I do, bro. I do. The thing is, it's the fear of, you know, again, people like getting getting a situation twisted in it. Do you know mm. what I'm saying, fam? It's it's a case where you could also incriminate yourself in it. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Do you get me? Depending on what you're doing. Me personally, bro, I've never everything that I do is always above board in it. Man's not entered fucking abusing people or coercing people. There's people that are involved in like trafficking and stuff like that. Man's against that, bro. Yeah? Like child trafficking and all this kind of stuff. Man will fuck up a child trafficker, bro. Do you get me? <laughs> Man will kick down his door and batter him, fam. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Like, for me now, my thing's always been different. Everything that I've done has always been with ethics and, you know, morals. due diligence, morals, in it. Yeah? yeah. Everything that we do is 
is proper in it. So, and like I said, my bro, I've never approached a gal and said, yo, come work with man. We can make money together. Loads of people do that. For me, that's cringy, fam. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, so yeah, man. There's there's levels to this shit in it, my bro. So I think on that note, we're gonna end the podcast because I think we've, you know, we've definitely touched up on a lot, and it's definitely been a different podcast of anything I've done before. How do you find it? That was good, man. Thanks Very for good. not making me feel comfortable, bro. And yeah, man. Well, the place is yours. The place is Come yours. On, but anyway, man. if you lot enjoyed that. Uh, I hope that all of you press that like button. It actually helps out a ton. Share this to other people. Like I said, we're trying to get to 50k subscribers. So if we can get there for the end of the year, December 2021, I want to have 50k subscribers. So let's get that popping. Uh, other than that, make sure you follow friends on Instagram. Make sure you check out his music. I'm going to put that in the link in the description below. Follow Raheem. That's me. <laughs> follow CEO Cost on Instagram. Um, and then, yeah, we'll catch you next time on the next episode of CEO Cost. I hope you lot all enjoyed that. Yeah? Nice. No, that, that'll say you, that'll say you.